All right, guys, I want to show you something tonight that is fantastic, right? I want you to see something that the cry of our hearts that follow along the lineage of those that have gone before us. I'm talking great men of the past, right? But they had a heart that God could use all of them. And I don't want us to settle for anything less than that because to be less than that is to shortchange God and what he has called us to, what he has created us for, and what he longs to do for us and through us. Okay, so I want you to see this today because you have no idea what your God is capable of. Beyond your wildest dreams, no thought has imagined what your God will do through one who will surrender to him. Now watch what I'm talking about because first and foremost, you need to know who you are to God. Your price, your value, your worth before the King of Kings. And it ain't that less that you think you are. It is so highly sought after and valued that he give up everything for it. And you may not have ever been told this, but I want you to see this today. And I want you to see um, Jesus himself sharing with those who would dare have ears to hear who they are to him. All right. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew 13. And we're going to get this thing started with verse 44. Matthew 13 and 44 says this. It says, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in all his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had, and he bought it. Ah, Now, a lot of times you're going to hear this, and they're going to say it's about us finding God. Listen to me, baby. We ain't got no need of God until he has need of us. We love because he first loved us. We are enemies of the cross before he comes and finds us. Don't you understand? We lost. We all have forsaken him and sinned against him. And we work in our own lives. We do in our own way. Until the Savior, who sees such great value. And yes, you win that dirt. Yes, you win that mud. Yes, you win that sin. But he sees a buried treasure therein. And he says, I can use that. But to gain him, I can't stay where I'm at. So we wait all of heaven against what he saw in that darkness. And he sold it all to come be born of a virgin just to gain the ground that the treasure was hidden in, you and me. And he came and he gained. How did he gain? He spilled his blood. He paid the price that was due to gain. Ain't no other could do it except him. And he wanted to do it. Why? Because he valued you that much. He saw such priceless potential inside of you. Don't you understand? You ain't the lesser. You the more. And that's what it is. That's what I'm trying to convey. First and foremost, you got to know that you're the head and not the tail. I don't care what thought comes against you. Your God's thoughts for you. He is rejoicing over you. You are priceless. Nothing in all of heaven was found in comparison to you. So he had to give it all up and come and gain you. And he was willing to pay the ultimate price, his own blood, just to have you. That's how much you're worth. So whatever comes against you saying you less, you better fight back in uh, <laughs> the affirmative. Like, no, I'm the more. Why? Because my Jesus showed me I was. He wasn't, didn't just talk about it. He was about it. He demonstrated my worth by going to that cross. What you doing, thought? You're just trying to bring me down to my lesser so I don't reach the potential that God's got for me to reach. And that's what it is. Because if those thoughts from the enemy, them fiery darts, could keep us low and impotent, we are impotent. We powerless because we never see the potential that God saw in us. We let some other thought dictate what we can do, how we can do it, or what our God could do through us. And he says, no, 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 you are of priceless value. You're a treasure hidden in a field. How much you worth? The blood of a son. That's how much you worth. Worth in all creation. What you've seen out there worth that much. Nothing. You are above value. You are priceless beyond measure. Raise that head, square those shoulders, and straighten that back, baby. You are priceless. And look what Jesus, in 1 Corinthians 6, look at this. You were not your own. See, now you can't get conceited in it because you can get a big head puffed up like and try holding yourself as such in a cocky way. He said, oh, <laughs> you priceless, but you ain't your own. You are bought at a price, therefore honor God with your bodies. Like you aren't your own. You priceless, but he bought you. He paid the price for you. You are now his. Now watch this, because I'm going to get super personal with you here. This was the cry of my heart this week, right? I'm talking to God. I'm in my prayer time. Me and him, we in that secret place, right? 
and I'm crying out to him because I ain't even seen what God has promised my life. I have not seen it. I saw glimpses of it now. I saw some like rubbing some sticks together, saw some smoke. I know some fire is close, right? But I ain't saw the fullness of it. And I told God, these are the words that come out of my mind. You bought me at a price. Get your money's worth out me. Like literally, you aren't getting enough value from me. Why? Because you paid it all. I ain't giving enough. You ain't got your money's worth. Don't let me cheapen this. Don't let me treat cheap what you did for me. Don't let me sit back and get lazy on this. Get your money's worth out of me. I want to lay my life down for this. I want to give it all to this. I want to reach the ends of the earth with this. Why? Because you paid the price for me, and I want you to get the fullness thereof. And tell me that's not what Isaiah did when he was hearing God talk, and he says, who will go for us? And he had just been relieved of his sins by the hot coal that was in his mouth, and something stirred inside his heart because he saw something. That God valued him enough to cleanse him, to bring him into his presence and to his um, company. And then he heard the question, who will go for me? And Isaiah is like, listen, here I am. Send me. Why? Get your money's worth out of me. And that should be all of our heart's cries. Because then God's got something to use. You know what I'm saying? Like he's got a heart of flame. He's got someone willing to lay it all down to be spent by God. To not cheapen this thing of grace that God has extended on us. To not cheapen the value of what he sees. But know that there's a price that's I'm going to give the full worth to God. I'm going to give everything. I ain't leaving it this side of heaven. Like let him have it all. And how can I convey this to you? Let me share Two thousand seven, why uh, my God takes me and my wife to Zimbabwe, Africa. Right? He put it in our heart to go. I heard it on a radio. I was working for a farmer at the time, and I heard that a local group of people was taking a mission trip to Zimbabwe, Africa, and something resonated inside my heart and said, "I'm going." My wife's like, "You ain't going alone. You're going. I'm going with you." So we went as a couple to Zimbabwe, Africa, two thousand seven. And while we were there, it was like a traumatic. Um, time in that country and the their value of their dollar was just plummeting right so the official exchange rate the time that we went was if you went to the banking exchange you get 200 of their dollars for one of our dollars right so 201 that's the ratio but if you did it on the black market you were getting 200,000 of their dollars for every one of our dollars so that's how they get trillionaires over there right 200,000 to one on the black market versus 200 to one in the official banking system, right? Well, somehow we get hooked up over there and we get to exchange the 200,000 to one ratio. So me and my wife take $300 and we exchange it out. And do you know how much money we got in exchange for $300? Like quick math, $60 million of their currency. Instant millionaires, man. Instant millionaires. 60 million, like people don't even know. We had a group with us. They didn't even know where to put it. Ladies shoving it in the bras. You put it in your pants. Like, what you going to do with it? Because I'm talking, you got stacks of money. And these are $100,000 notes, $50,000 notes. Um, I think $20,000 notes were also in the denominations. But stacks of money. You got to do something with it. And you, you don't want to be seen with it. You know what I'm saying? So they were shoving it anywhere and everywhere that we could walk with this stuff. Now, why do I tell you this? Because at the end of the trip, we had leftovers. We didn't spend it all, right? We had millions left over. So we go to the airport. Now watch this. This is my childish way of thinking, right? We go to the airport. We got millions um, on us. I had to bribe the official for my group to get out the airport. Like, I ain't even joking. We slid $3 million in his hand to let us go because he was holding us up through the customs eye. So we put $3 million in his hand. What's up, my man? And he let us all go through, right? But I still had millions left in my bag. What am I doing with them? I'm keeping them as souvenirs. Just to show what happened, the state that we were at, $100,000 bills, when's the last time you had that? Let's hope we don't see that in this country. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. But I kept them as souvenirs. Now watch, how's this supply? Where I was going, that money was worthless. You could, it was monopoly money. You came back to America, you couldn't spend one of those $100,000 notes. Absolutely worthless. But in the country I just left, it could change a life for a day. You know what I'm saying? millions I could have left with the group that we went with. Millions. And I took it with me. And where I was going, it was absolutely worth it. And that's what I'm trying to say with you and God. Don't you understand how priceless you are here? This is the vineyard. This ain't heaven. 
This is the vineyard. Be spent now because when you get there, it's all worship, baby. You ain't working, but here you can work. You can be spent. And it ain't just you. It is what he has gifted you with. Because don't you know, in Ephesians 4, Scripture states this. It says, when he ascended on high, this is verse 8, we're talking to Jesus. When he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. Like he gave gifts to his people. So not only did he see you as priceless and valuable and shed his blood for you, but when he victoriously rose from that grave and ascended back to the throne of the Most High, he extended gifts to his people. To do what with? Not to keep his souvenirs. Not to hold on to this whole time so when we get back to heaven it's monopoly money but to be spent here, to use here, because this is where the action is. This is where the light matters, because there's darkness. There ain't going to be no darkness there, but now we can penetrate that veil of darkness and shed light on people that are caged up in there and bring them out. And how you do that, you use your gift. Just like when I was there in the country, I had to use their currency to buy whatever. You use the gift God has given you to reach now and here. Feel me? All right, so let me jump to 1 Corinthians 12. I love it. I love it. 1 Corinthians 12. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters. I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good, for all of us, right? To benefit this world that is in darkness. To one, there is given the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous power, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still to another the interpretations of tongues. All these are the work of the one and the same Spirit, and He distributes them to each one just as He determines. But they for the here, they for the now, because all of them have their moment, and then they're done. Over there, you're not going to need that. Where you're going, it's going to be monopoly money. Useless, right? But it's for the here. That's why Jesus imparted them to us now that we might use them. So what we're doing here, we're trying to use our gift. God gave me a revelatory gift. That's all he gave me. He shows me revelations, right? How this world connects to Scripture, how Scripture connects to this world, them aha moments that bring light and clarity to what he's saying. And all I'm doing is trying to share with you what the Creator shared with me. That's it. I'm trying to use this good for the common good. Where? Here and now. Not when I get there. I ain't trying to hide this in the dirt. I remember a servant getting rebuked for that by his master in Scripture, don't you? But those that would pull them out the ground and put them to use, they saw a return on their investment. They used the gift now when it was worth something. Not then. (laughs) Then it ain't worth nothing. But here it's worth everything. So if God has given you a gift, Spend it. And don't get a twist. I ain't talking about money. Although some of y'all got some bucks up, spend that stuff on some uh, eternal stuff. Let's just touch on that real quick. You thinking, hmm, you thinking this life is all about making them stacks. You want to be like, like me earlier describing stacks of $100,000 bills, right? 60 million? Ah, that sounds pretty good to you. But I'm telling you, it ain't, it's going to be useless to you on the other side. You can't throw it in a coffin and it transfers over to you when you get to heaven. That ain't a currency over there. Faith is a currency over there. That's it. And if you don't make it there and you go to the other place, it's useless there too, just to let you know. So don't get so hung up on the 10 years of retirement you're trying to save up for, the legacy for the generation that comes after you. Because where you're going, what matters is what you have, um, that you have been spent here because your works will be seen there. Mm. Let me show you, Paul. Because Isaiah is not alone in this. 
Paul is down the same track and we are called, and I pray I'm a man that is called down the same track because we are to be spent here. We ain't supposed to play it safe. What's safe gotten anybody? I mean, God's honest truth. What has safe gotten anybody except six feet under? And they go to <laughs> the other side with all their hopes and all their dreams still attached to them. They didn't spend nothing. They didn't dare for anything. They didn't try for anything. And they lived a life of less, of misery. Why? Because they didn't know how much they were worth to him. You think God's going to let you fail? You know how much you're worth to him? You know how valuable you are? He wants you to dare for him. He's given you gifts for a purpose, to use them, that he might bless them and be a blessing to others. When? Now. Not later when you got it all worked out. Listen to me, the cloud's never going to be right. It's never going to look like it's not going to be a storm. You wait on that, you ain't ever planting. You ain't ever harvesting. you got to do it when God gives it. Because you wait too long, good deeds left undone stay undone. Just the truth of it. Your greatest intentions stay intentions unless you act on them. So there comes a point in a man's life where you just got to go. You just got to do what you know your God has called you to do. And you got to know that you go in the knowledge and the um, belief that your God loves you beyond all measure. That he did not withhold his one and only son from him. What else will he withhold from you? Absolutely nothing. Not to do his call on your life. He put it on you that you might do it. He don't want to use another. Why? Because you the apple of his eye. I'm talking to you right now who think you broke, busted, and disgusted. It ain't got nothing to do with that. God loves you. You are everything to him. I don't care what that little thought says. I don't care what that little devil twisting in your life. You are the apple of his eye. Let him get his money worth out of you. Quit hiding in a hole somewhere. Quit cowing, thinking someone else can do it better. Who can do it better than you? You amazing. Listen to me, I'm talking to you, you wonderful. Why can't it be you? You have no idea how powerful you are in the name of Jesus. You have no idea how far you can go or what you are capable of because he loves you, because he wants you to be um, spent this side of heaven, because he wants to get his money without you. He ain't discounted you, quit discounting yourself. You ain't cheap, quit acting like it. And quit letting other people treat you like it. You hold that head up. You raise those standards and your expectations because your God has raised his on you. He didn't leave you in that dirt where he found you. He found you as a treasure, but he did not leave you filthy in it. He rose you up to clean you off, and he ain't satisfied with just a clean little treasure. He got to cut you and make it shine, baby. He got to put them angles on it that it glistens from all the facets that he sees in your life, what you are capable of, what you can do, where you will go, who you will meet, what you will influence, all of it. He sees from the beginning. You just got to let him work. You got to let him get his money without you. You can't be afraid to be spent this side of heaven. Because you wait too long, it comes on you quickly. And life is over. And you've lost your zeal. You've lost your fire. You've lost your energy. Your power to do anything. And you shrivel away. Doing nothing. Don't make that mistake. Too many make that mistake. Leave it this side. Do it all that he has called you to do. Leave the mark he has called you to leave. Listen to me. You may not know me now, but I promise you, we're going to yell until you do. Because our God has called us to be a summoner of nations. And there's some nations in some turmoil right now, and they need a savior. It ain't going to be no president. It ain't going to be no monarch, no czar, no cabinet. It's going to be a savior named Jesus. He is the only one. And when hearts repent and cry out to him, life will be birthed anew. They will find their salvation, and the darkness will be penetrated, and sons and daughters will be pulled out into the lights. Why? Because a man ain't daring to settle for less or to value himself less, but is willing to be spent this side of it. How do you think Paul shook the world? How do you think Paul planted them churches and shook the world for years? You want to know a secret? Let me show you a secret. This is how to... There is... Hmm. There is not enough of us following in these footsteps. Not even footsteps in these heartbeats. Because I want you to see Paul's heart. It wasn't about monies. It wasn't about 401ks. It was about honoring his God and letting his God get his money worth out of him. He kicked, it, kicked against the goads long enough. He fought back against Jesus long enough. 
And on that road to Damascus, everything changed. He gave his life. Remember, he's the same guy that says, to live is Christ, to die is gain. Now, that's a heart. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But look what he says in his letter to the Corinthians. His second letter to the Corinthians. Chapter 12, verses 14 and 15. Watch this, because this better be our cry. This better be, this side of heaven, this better be our cry. Now I'm ready to visit you for the third time, and I will not be a burden to you. Because what I want is not your possessions, but you. I ain't after your money. I know we get a bad rap in Christianity, like, oh, we ain't nothing about money, right? That's all we about. Pass the plate. <laughs> Let them one more time make the offering call. That ain't what this is about. Keep your possessions. We want you. We want that heart. God came to gain that. He don't care. He don't need your little money. It's worthless where he's at. But you? Ah, you priceless. I'll take all of that. That over there, I'll take all of that. You? Priceless. I don't want your possessions. I want you. That's the heart of Jesus right there. After all, children should not have to save up for their parents, but parents for their children. Now watch. This right here is the key. So I will very gladly spend for you everything I have and expend myself as well. Now, we lose it in this translation. Better said, I will spend and be spent for you. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Paul says, I will spend and be spent for you. Not only will I give everything to this God, get your money's worth out me, but I will spend for you. I'll use all my gifts this side of heaven. I ain't taking them back with me. I'm going to leave it all here. Why? Because it's going to be worthless there. Here is where the work's done. This is the vineyard. This is where we harvest. This is where we work and toil, sweat, blood, and tears. This I will spend and be spent for you. I ain't keeping silent. God, get your money's worth out me and let me use these gifts to the fullest of the ability. Let us reach. Let us go. We need a church over there? Let's get it over there. Oh, you want me over in Macedonia? Let's go to Macedonia. Why? I will spend and be spent this side of heaven and I ain't giving up easily. I ain't quitting. You want to put me in a sea? Put me in a sea. You want to flog me a couple times? You want to let me get whipped five times? Let's go. Why? I will spend and be spent. You are going to get your money's worth out of me. You prayed a mighty penny for me? Get it all. Because it wasn't cheap for you. I want you to have the fullness of me, God. And if we would dare have hearts like that, what you going to do with that? Ah, what's he going to do with that? And there's something usable. Who can have a heart that says to live is Christ, to die is gain? Ain't nothing else matter. Why? Because I'm going to the other side. I'm fixated on there, not here. And I will do everything here to benefit there. So Paul's like, keep your possessions, but let me have you. Because you are what's priceless to my king. And my king has sent me to gain the priceless possessions. It ain't your monies. They trivial. It ain't your dollars. They monopoly money. They, they worthless to me. But you are everything. And you what I came for. That's what my God is spending me on. And don't you know that's the thing? We are not our own. We have been bought at our price. And he can spend his where he wants his. And if he has called you to something, that is what he wants to spend you on. Because you are the perfect denomination for it. There ain't another. He ain't got to go make change out of you. You are the fullness to do that task. All you got to do is believe and let him change a heart to start seeing yourself as worth that much to accomplish that, to start seeing yourself and the gifts that he gives as worthy of being spent this side of heaven and not holding them on and guarding them and keeping them away from everyone else. So you hope you make them there with that. It ain't about that. You better go home empty handed. That stuff I came home with on vacation from our little mission trip, worthless. I don't even know where it's at now. That's 14 years ago. I have no idea where it's even at now. See what I'm talking about? Let it dare not be said of us on the important things that we kept them hidden, that we kept them tucked in a bag somewhere as a souvenir so when we, we don't even... <laughs> feel me? Let's spend it all here for the glory of the King. And first and foremost, you've got to know that He came to get you. 
You may be in your lowest point right now, but he sees you in that lowest point and he values you as priceless. And he wants you to know you've been bought at a price. He's already paid for you. He's already spilled his blood. All you got to do to receive, to lift up out that dirt, to rise from that grave and start walking in his light is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that he paid the price, that he hung on that cross and spilled his blood for the remission of your sins. And you will have life. He will forgive you. Your sins will be removed and cast into the deepest ocean. As far as the east is from the west, he will remove them from you, and he will make you a brand new creation. The old is gone, and the new has come, and he has clothed you with righteousness, my man. He has given you a robe fitting of your worth, and it's white, it's blemish, free. And when he looks upon you, he sees a son and not a slave, and that is your identity, nothing less. Ladies, daughters, you ain't less than that, so you start holding yourself to that standard. And you go out and you work as a child of the Most High. You let him have his way in your life. And use the gifts that he's bestowed upon you for his glory in this earth. And don't get it twisted. Every one of us has been given gifts. Because my king ascended on high and gave them to all. You just got to be willing to use them. But if you are willing to use them, scripture says your gift will make room for you. He's got ways to meet every need if you will dare use the gift. This side of heaven, not that side. I pray you got the courage. I pray you got the boldness. I pray you get the spirit like Isaiah, like Paul, like the others that have gone before us that are willing to spend and be spent and let God get his money's worth out of us because he prayed a hefty price for us and he deserves no less. All right. Ah, I love it, guys. God bless. And let me send you away, away with a blessing. It says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In Jesus' name. Hi, guys. My name is Cash Hunsley, and I just wanted to personally take the time to thank you for watching this video. The privilege of sharing what God has laid on my heart is incredible. And I pray that as you watch this, your heart was hit as well. And if it has, I ask you to partner with us in simply sharing this with someone you know could use it. They're out there, they're hungry, and they need to have the love of Jesus put in their lives, put in their path, get in their way. And I pray our ministry <laughs> works in that exact endeavor. We're called to summon nations, and I ask you to partner with us in doing that. I appreciate your prayers and your shares in the name of Jesus. God bless.